Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is me, Stella Hendricks, and I am just here sharing my opinion about things that I find interesting and also sharing my favorite toys and uh, my favorite artworks and my favorite things with people on the internet if anyone else finds this interesting too. Um, I just kind of like to share my favorite things. I guess I never quite got out of kindergarten. My favorite thing is show and tell. It always has been. Um, so last time I was showing my uh, February 1963 Playboy and in the beginning uh, I um, I had come across a letter to the editor type thing regarding Marilyn Monroe and it had referenced how she had agreed um, before her untimely passing she had agreed to pose for a two-sided Playboy cover and I said something like oh I remember um, the cover when the girls next door did their cover and I wondered if um, it was the same exact kind. Well, it's not the same exact, but I went ahead and ordered it online because I wanted to see exactly what it would be like. And instead of being, uh, ah, instead of being front and back, like Holly Bridget and Kendra, it's almost the same. Can you see that? <laughs> there we go. So it's almost exactly like that. And I just thought that is such a cool little connect. Um, it's not exactly the same because this is the front, front and back of the magazine. Well, this is just the front and back of the, the cover page, the, the front of the magazine. But, oh, that's super cool. I had no idea that they had that on there before. And while I absolutely love this beautiful girl, can you imagine if that was Marilyn Monroe? Oops. Ah. Oh my gosh. But alas, tis not Marilyn, it is this beautiful brunette, and we love this nonetheless. So let's dive on in. Um, I couldn't find, you guys, if you can see it, you should tell me where the heck it is. I cannot find the hidden bunny on this cover. It reminds me of looking for the hidden Mickeys at Disneyland. I love to do it, and I'm terrible at it. I can never find anything. Where's Waldo? Never found him, always looked. <laughs> it's not my forte, I don't think. So if anyone finds it, y'all let me know, okay? So one of my favorite things about these old uh, Playboys is they have these old uh, like albums in here that you can order. Kind of reminds me of a book order from back in the day. <laughs> and they've got Peggy Lee, Dean Martin, K-Star, just all these old singers, more, uh, <laughs> Steve Martin, he's a popular guy. They've got like, they got him in about four times. I don't know who the Kingston trio is, but they look delightful. Also, this cracks me up over here, this advertisement. Um, it reminds me of a Nicholas Sparks movie where the cover is always two white people almost kissing. <laughs> they should definitely look into this. What album is that even for? I don't know. I think it's just for the advertisement for all of these. Buy her a record and she'll give you a smooch. All right, so the next most awesome thing in here is this incredible advertisement and this woman's truly fantastic hat. Uh, I had a very, very fabulous great-grandmother. Um, she wasn't actually that fabulous. There was all these stories about how terrible and mean she was, but she was fabulous in the sense that she would definitely be the person uh, wearing these hats. When I was a little kid, uh, my family had a little uh, cabin up at Kings Beach Lake Tahoe. We'd all gather there for the summer and one of my favorite things to do was to run over to the closet where we had all the hats, the beach hats, we called them. I always had to wear hats. Um, I'm a natural redhead and I'm incredibly fair skinned. And when you get up into the elevations at Lake Tahoe, oh, you burn like crazy. So I always had to wear a hat when I went out to the lake and most of the kids uh, could easily pers be persuaded to wear hats out there because my grandma Ruthie, <laughs> 
had filled the closet with these fabulous hats from the 60s and they really they look like that i think i have a family photo somewhere i'll try to look and see if i can find it but there's a picture of all of us cousins about i don't know 20 of us cousins out on the porch wearing these fantastic hats if this one looks like it's fur i think we had a fur one i know we had an orange one that was a similar shape to this there were ones with different beads and different like fuzz around the edges they were just fabulous and uh if i can find that picture i'll put it up it's just the greatest the 60s are the greatest this this fashion and stuff oh it kills me Uh, so the next really cool thing that I found in here that I love is this old Chanel ad. What every woman alive wants. Chanel number five. I remember my very beautiful and classy grandmother um, always had Chanel number five up on her armoire. She had a whole collection of uh, perfumes up there and a lot of them were uh, you know, like Chanel Number no. 5 or Jicky or some of like the really uh, old school uh, famous uh, uh, scents. I can't remember half of them now. I'll have to look them up again, but I remember as a little girl looking at all the different glasses, all the different bottles of perfume up on the top of her dresser and just oh, like being enchanted. Like it was a collection of diamonds or Fabergé eggs sitting up there sparkling. Oh, how beautiful. But yeah, the Chanel number no. five. And look at these models. Is this the same model in a lighter wig and a darker wig? It looks almost like the same girl. I'm, I'm, I honestly, I'm not sure. So it looks a lot like, um, <laughs> that Mad Men, what, Betty, Betty Draper. Isn't this so Betty Draper? <laughs> I love it. Okay, so I found this article I cannot possibly read the whole thing, but I thought it was really interesting. Of course, this is a December issue and it's not Christmas right now, but you know, people have birthdays and need for gifts all the year round. So ooh, my poor magazine, it's falling apart, you guys. It's very old. It's not in the best shape. I must be gentle. Okay. This is from an article called Gifting the Girls. A guide for guys on pleasing their playmates. Pardon my hiccups. I hiccup all the time. In choosing the right gift for the right girl, the length of time you've known her is important. If the ink is barely dry in your address book, an inexpensive but perceptive gift will do the trick. If you discussed music or literature during your one bright evening together, Try the latest album or anthology featuring one of her favorites. If you are old friends, but your times with her are preferably platonic, an impersonal gift is in order. Umbrellas, fountain pens, candy, luggage, handkerchiefs, colognes, traveling clocks, cigarette lighters, and costume jewelry chosen to conform to her tastes and her possessions all indicate friendship, pure and simple. But if she's the one who phones after midnight, a lavish and more familiar remembrance is called for to keep her on the line. Sable, if you're able, is fine. And a black, Be a black Belgian lace negligee could be perfect if the rapport is fit et complet. I think that's how you say that. But don't give her a diamond unless you mean to suggest the permanence that goes with it. In choosing a really important present for that very special someone, remember that every female is born with a taste for luxury, i.e. for furs, jewels, and perfume. But luxury, needn't be be me but luxury needn't be beyond reasonable reach. If you can't afford a full-length fur, a black velvet stole, or jacket trimmed with something undeniable like chinchilla will still impress her. In jewelry, you don't have to care for her in carrots, just as long as the gem is the just as long as the gem is the real thing. But if size does count, give her a whopper of a dinner ring with a high-quality synthetic stone, but make sure it's the kind that she admires. 
by far the easiest of the luxury line, both on purchaser and purse, is perfume. I'm gonna flip this over a little. My poor magazine. I know I'm cringing for it. <sighs> the e easiest of the luxury line, both on purchaser and purse, is perfume. It's a breeze to buy and can usually be found, even at the last minute, in most drug and department stores. If you're going to send her a scent, be sure the sweet smell is a success. If she's loyal to one fragrance, buy her the whole set from purse flecken to dressing table cologne, or add a Swedish crystal atomizer. Oh, I love those. If she has a collection of aromas, give her a chance to order a custom made blend of her very own from a fine cosmetics house. If she's proud of her pad but hasn't finished furnishing it, send her a functional conversation piece, a small antique chair or desk, an area rug, a box made of polished or inlaid wood, gold bathroom fixtures, a chafing dish, unique bookends, or an original by her favorite contemporary artist. Check out the local galleries. Special holiday collections are usually on display. In considering the gift of garb, it is best to avoid quickly outmoded high fashions, eccentric shades, except for eccentric girls, and bothersome fabrics that spend most of their lives at the cleaners. Be sure that whatever you get her complements her existing wardrobe in taste, color, and size. Cashmere sweaters, silk blouses, scarves, elbow length gloves, stretch pants. Stretch pants? Are they suggesting you get yoga pants? Man, this is, this is futuristic. Every girl loves yoga pants. They got us pegged, man. Japanese kimonos, one-of-a-kind belts, and handbags of all sizes are always accepted with open arms. If you give her a purse, enclose an extra surprise, a flacon of her favorite perfume, a monogram key ring, or a leather cigarette case. If she's sentimental, a small gold charm that recalls a special date or event will enchant her. If she's a softy, she'll also be swayed by a silver cigarette box, lighter, or telephone desk pad, engraved with your secret nonsense word, or the first letters of a significant message, a line from her favorite poem, or the notes of your special song. Even simple monogramming, which most stores will do in less than a week, adds, for, adds an only for me value to such otherwise ordinary and utilitarian gifts such as stationery, cocktail shakers and glasses, silver bookmarks, handkerchiefs, placemats, bathroom and boudoir accessories, and the like. For repeated remembrance, a continuing gift is the ticket. Enroll her in any one of a dozen good fruit, cheese, book, candy, or record of the month clubs. Or, more personal still, buy her an instructional course in anything from Italian to flying, water skiing to skydiving. If it's culture she seeks, she'll be delighted with a two-seat two subscription for the opera, symphony, art, film, society, or lecture series, and she's sure to ask you to keep her company. Another nice reminder is a gift subscription to a prestige or specialty magazine. Christmas spirits, if well chosen, make fine presents and can be easy on the budget. For a bit of offbeat memorabilia, give your young flame an old bottle of brandy bearing the vintage year of her birth. For an old flame, get a great champagne that bears the date of the year you met. In either case, include a pair of just for the two of you glasses. For pleasant but impersonal gifts, liquor stores offer last minute haven with a wide range of specialty holiday gift bottles. Along more luxurious lines, you might consider the jewel-like splendor of a Baccarat crystal decanter of Remy Martin Louis the Sixth Louis Sixteenth. No, that's 14th, <laughs> oops, Roman numerals, of uh, Louis the Fourteenth uh, cognac encased in green velvet. If she knows her wines or wants to, give her an expandable wine rack made of interlocking aluminum sleeves and slip in a sampling of good stock to get her cellar started. If the girl's a gourmet, spice up her life with a fine French herb rack or delve into a delicacy shop to select a gift basket of escargot, 
grapes, smoked game, beluga caviar, gouda cheese, and other canned and glazed goodies. Or give her a custom blend of coffee and an espresso maker. But don't, whatever you do, give her the makings of a Christmas dinner as a gift and expect her to fix it in your honor. That would not go over well at all. <laughs> Well, I think that's lovely. I always have a hard time coming up with gifts for people, but I really like how they touch on um, the personalization of things in here. You know, they really encourage the guy to think about what your relationship to the girl is. And they're not just talking about, oh, just getting, you know, uh, getting these things for spoiled girls who are gonna, you know, hop into bed with you. They're talking also about friends and how to really personalize gifts. And I think that's the most important thing uh, there's this great quote, I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it, from Maya Angelou that this article kind of reminded me of. Uh, she said, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. I just love Maya Angelou. I think every word that comes out of her mouth is poetry, and that's one of the truest things I ever heard. So I, I really felt like that was the, the theme of this article and I just think that's delightful and um, just very gentlemanly. And I like how at the end, you know, Playboy has this, I think very unwarranted reputation from the feminazis about, oh, you know, they're just uh, dehumanized women and all of these things, whatever. I mean, right in there, it says, you know, don't, don't treat her like your servant. Don't treat her like your cook, you know, consider, her personality and her specific things when getting her these gifts and don't be thinking about yourself. So anyway, I think that this expresses a really great attitude and in general, that's just a really good way to, you know, help you get those creative juices going, thinking about what good um, gifts you could give friends or family or that notorious person who already has it all. <laughs> so this one, there's no boobs I had to cover up, are there? No, you can't see anything. There she is. Elegant doll. Having long observed from afar the admirable architecture of Arlene Dahl, Playboy now dollies in for a Christmas close-up of moviedom's most ravishing redhead. In a gallery of tastefully tantalizing pictures shot exclusively for us in the satin seclusion of her Beverly Hills boudoir. Don't you love the word boudoir? Everything is better when it's a boudoir. One more time. Here we go. You're blocking her face, I think I am. She looks so beautiful, but I really wish they wouldn't have put her in all this red. Redheads don't look good in red. We don't look good in pink. I mean, there's always exceptions, but my experience as a redhead. I love this one with the fur. Look how fancy. I love that one. Absolutely love the redheads. Again, the 60s, the poofiness of those 60s hairdos. It just kills me. Oh, okay, here we go. Now we got the Playmate of the Month. So I'm gonna show you a little picture of her and then I'll read you, not the whole biography, but just a little bit. There we go. Look at her hair. Doesn't she look like a Targaryen? I didn't know they were doing the ultra platinum back then or her hair almost looks gray. You know how people will dye their hair gray nowadays? I didn't think that was a thing at all back in the day, but her hair looks positively silver, doesn't it? Unusual. 
Also interesting, because I'll show you her centerfold in a minute, but her hair in there is a different color. So, <clears throat> updating Charles Dickens. We hereby nominate December Playmate June Cochran as this season's most endearing embodiment of the spirit of Christmas present. Am I tacky? I think if your name is June, then you should be the June Playmate. If your name is April, you should be the April. I just feel like that would be fun. Maybe I'm tacky. I don't know. Anyway, <clears throat> June's Yuletide credentials are disarmingly self-evident. A smile as warming as rum toddy, blue-green eyes that are a blend of mistletoe with girlish enchantment, a personality as sentimental as a crackling fireside, oh that's cute, and the glowing health of an apple-cheeked cheeked caroler. A part-time model and full-time beauty back home in Indiana, our 20-year-old, ah, Hoosier Honey's superbly packaged presence has already won her a wassail bowlful of beauty contest awards including the title of Miss Indiana in this year's Miss World Beauty Pageant. Playboy Snowbell loves twisting. <laughs> Remember the, the, the Chubby Checker song, I think, Do the Twist? Is that Chubby Checker? I'm gonna have to, ch I'm gonna have to check, I'm not sure. Um, loves twisting and miniature golf, Corvettes and shish kebab, and admires males who get as big a boot from life as she. That's so cute. And we can't show the whole centerfold because, you know, boobs. But look at the hair. So remember in the first picture, she had like silver hair. And in this one, she's definitely got like my color, like golden blonde. I wonder if that's just lighting. But in like these pictures, her hair looks like it's white. It's so I honestly, I can't tell. I'm not sure what color she would have had all the time. And then, oh, here are some cute candid pictures that I absolutely love the candids they have too. Ms. June Cochran. Oh, and the party jokes. They've always got, right after the Playmate of the Month, they've always got the party jokes. <clears throat> the wondrously stacked blonde appeared at her door in a strapless evening gown that defied gravity. Terrific, said her admiring escort. I don't see what holds that dress up. Well, play your cards right. And you will, she replied. I love those jokes. I used to go through, my mom used to get the Reader's Digest and I would go through it and just read all the party jokes. I thought that they were hilarious. I've always loved those little things. Whoop. <laughs> Be careful with your vintage magazines, friends. Okay, so this dress is absolutely hysterical. Remember, this is 1962. Look at that. It's a booty dress. I think every so often somebody shows up on the fashion scene with the booty dress or a different incarnation of the booty dress and everyone gets scandalized and everybody wonders if butt cleavage is the new cleavage. And the answer is always no, but it's always it's nonetheless very amusing to see these dresses. Although down at the bottom, doesn't that look like the pussy hats that they are all wearing to the women's march? Can you see? Oh, see, I can't, I'm not hundred percent sure if you can see it or not, but down at the bottom of that dress, it looks like, um, I love to say that word on YouTube. It looks like the hats from the Women's March, if you know what I mean. It's a very feminist dress. So that's about it for this episode. Oh, except for one last thing. Um, I obviously don't love this um, advertisement too much because it does feel vaguely sexist, but uh, you have to listen a little further. Okay, so it says, Every playboy should keep his playmate in a lame sweetheart chest. Yeah, yeah, hilarious. Women are possessions. Again, this wasn't playboys. It's just an ad in here. But they did run the ad in the magazine. 
Although it's also kind of joking, I think it's the most serious thing. I think sometimes people take that stuff a lot more seriously than it was ever intended. But the reason I think this is so interesting is because they call it here a sweetheart chest. When I was young, I got one of these things. We called it a hope chest. Um, my mom said it was for putting, uh, like a long time ago, they'd give them to girls for putting dishes and stuff in. And you're supposed to take it with like your trousseau once you get married, all the things that, like doilies and shit that you're supposed to save up for your new home once you get married, I guess back in the day. Okay, I'm 35. Has anyone else of my generation experienced this? I think that Mormons tend to be like um, a generation behind everyone else. They're just very old fashioned and um, very traditional in a lot of ways. We can be good and can be bad. Uh, but hope chests are one thing that I think is a kind of um, a harmless thing, kind of a lovely thing, an interesting thing. And it's just uh, amusing to me to see it here in this 1960s magazine and think to myself, yeah, that is about a generation behind me. I was kind of raised with this mentality. But anyway, I wanted to uh, read some of this to you and see if, did you guys have anything like this? Did your mom have anything like this? A lame sweetheart chest has been nominated as the most wanted gift of the year next to a large diamond ring. It is a kind of home before marriage to most young ladies who love to fill it with soft things. So it is kind of like something you're like preparing to move into your new house with this thing or something like that. One way to give it to a girl is to go with her to pick it out. If you're in the army or hiding in Mallorca, or if you just hate shopping, you can now send your girl a gift certificate. Wow, very fancy and innovative. But a warning, most playmates take a lame sweetheart chest as a serious declaration of intentions. If you're going to give one, bear this in mind. So is this something that, is this like a, a, a precursor to a engagement ring? Is it, was this a thing back in the day? I honestly don't know, I'll have to look it up, but I am interested. And I never even heard of anyone getting it from a guy before, the guy giving it to her is kind of like, oh, hey, you know, you better get ready for moving into the house. That makes kind of sense, but it was something that my mom gave to me and my older sister has one. I know my younger sister has one. I have a lot of siblings, so I don't know if everyone got one or if it's still a thing that we're doing. I actually thought that it was kind of like a Mormon thing um, until recently. And also this is one of the things I saw and I thought, oh, this can't be just a Mormon thing. I think this is just an old fashioned thing. Very interesting. So today's is a little bit shorter. Oh man, I am messing up this poor magazine. It was in kind of beat up shape when I when it arrived. Um, but I think I'm beating it up a little bit more. I'm gonna have to look up some ways to restore your poor magazines after you have battered them. <laughs> Alas. Anyway, the coolest part of this magazine was definitely the cover. That unique two-sided cover. Very cool. And this was a lot of fun. And I hope I'll see you guys next time when we check out the next thing. It won't always be Playboy magazines. Um, in fact, I think the next one is this Princess Diana book that I have. Um, I'll probably at some point start reading histories of people who are interesting to me. Uh, just flamboyant and scandalous people in general are the ones who I find the most interesting and um, I like to talk about the most. So I got a lot of these vintage Playboys. We'll definitely be going through them, but that won't be in every single episode um, type thing. So. Thanks very much for stopping by, and I hope you enjoyed my vintage Playboy as much as I did. And I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.